Hey guys, so today I'm going to teach you how to make this glove. Um, I'm going to film a step-by-step -step tutorial showing all steps, so every single stitch. It's going to be pretty long. If you already know how to knit, you can download in the description box below a PDF profile with all the steps already written out, so you might not need to watch the tutorial, but you're going to need 4.5 millimeter knitting needles and some scissors. So let's get started. I have the double pointed knitting needles and I have four of them. Now this is going to be a full tutorial, as in I'm going to show each and every step that we're going to take to create these gloves. So the very first thing you're going to do is create a slip knot. Looks like I have a knot in my yarn. I'm going to take that out. So what you're going to do is lay your yarn over your hand, make a loop, and pull up. Another way to create the slip knot is just to make a circle and then pull the yarn through the circle and put that on your hook. And now we're going to take the yarn and put another stitch on there. So we have two stitches. And now you either need to use the long tail cast on or the crochet cast on. I'm obviously going to use the crochet cast on. So you're going to take your two stitches, stick your needle through them, yarn over on your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull this stitch over this one. And then put this on your hook. You're going to keep doing this until you have 24 stitches. I'm going to put eight on each needle. So the reason I used a crochet cast on is that it's stretchier than your normal cast on. I use the crochet cast on for literally every single project that I make when I'm knitting. It's super, super easy and it just creates a really nice clean edge. So you're going to keep sticking it through the two stitches on the end, yarning over, pulling that through, yarning over, pulling that stitch over the second one, and put that on the hook. Now I'm making these small gloves. If you download the PDF in the description, it links to Ravelry, which you can download a full PDF pattern. There's a medium version and a large version, depending on what size, hand, or an end wrist that you have. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to put these four on this hook and continue around. So basically you're just going to ignore this needle and just make sure the stitches don't slip off as you are continuing to get those 24 stitches. Of course, you can use the long tail cast on here. I wouldn't use a regular cast on because I don't think it would give the bottom of your glove enough stretch 
to fit over your wrist. Now I'm going to make sure there's eight on this needle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and put it in the center. So now I'm going to ignore these two needles and cast eight stitches on this needle. Four, five, Seven, eight, all right, so now I have all of my stitches on the needles and we need to join in the round. So I'm going to cast on one extra stitch. So now I have 25 stitches, and this part is kind of hard. I'm going to rearrange my needles so that none of the stitches are twisted. See how this, this is what it would look like if it was twisted, but you want them all to lay a certain way. I'm going to bring them together. And then I'm going to pass this stitch, the very first stitch I cast on, over to the last needle and pass the last stitch off and over the first stitch and then pass the first stitch back to the first needle. And then I can pull on the tails to tighten it up. Oops. This part is still hard for me. I always get the loops messed up. There we go. And just make sure everything is centered. All right, now we're going to start knitting. So we're going to knit the first row. So I use my tail to mark where the rows begin. So just knit all the stitches. I love the color of this yarn. It's so pretty. So that's the end of round one. And in the next round, we're going to purl all the stitches. So bring your yarn to the front and purl.
if you're doing this for the first time, these other needles can get in the way. Sometimes you have to like scoot them around in order to work on a certain row so that they're out of your way. Hmm. Now we're just going to repeat this, these two rows, two more times. So knit one row, purl one row, knit one row, purl one row. I'm going to purl another row. Some people like to put a stitch marker right here to help mark the beginning of the row. You have to put it after the first stitch because it'll fall off the end of your needle if you put it right next to the first stitch. I would say working with double pointed needles does take a lot of practice. You can of course do this with something called the magic loop method, which is where you use a really, really long needle that's connected with a plastic tube. It's a circular needle. But I've never done that and I kind of like using the double pointed needles now just because I'm so familiar with them. They just, I instinctively pretty much know how to manipulate them. But if you're having a lot of trouble with double pointed needles, I would tell you to try the circular needle magic loop method. Now I'm going to do one more round of knit and purl. One round of knit and one round of purl. Since I'm just knitting and purling along with you guys and I'm not speeding anything up or slowing anything down, you can probably sit here and knit this right along with me. This is meant to be like a semi-intermediate beginner course, like um, I suppose you should already know how to knit and purl, but if you're working in the round for one of your first times, this will be a great tutorial to follow. Now we're going to do one more round of purl. And do make sure you follow the PDF pattern. It's going to give you written instructions that you can you can see row by row. That way if you need to stop the video and put down your work or go eat dinner or something, 
you can mark on the PDF pattern where you're at. Um, and you can even write down like what time you're at in the video so that you can just pick up right where you left off and not worry about getting lost. Okay, so we've done the ribbing part of our cuff. And now we're going to go on to a little bit of a separation and some decoration. So we're going to knit two rows. So here goes row one of knitting. Here goes some more knitting. And this is a really quick glove to knit, actually. Um, I'm going to make a few of these for Christmas gifts, and that's why I decided to film some. I'm going to also make another pair to take pictures of for the PDF. And I want to make a quick version of this video without showing step by step, so I'll need to make another glove for that because I don't want to have to watch this whole thing and cut it down. So I'll just film myself making this again, but in a quick fashion, like my other videos are like. Okay, so that's one row of knit, and now we're going to go on and knit another row. You guys will have to let me know if you like this style of video. Um, I know it's the first one I've done where I'm showing every single step and it might be really boring for some of you, which I would recommend watching the quick video or just downloading the PDF pattern if you already know what you're doing and you don't need to see every step or hear explanations. That would probably be the best bet for you. But if that's not you, you're the reason I made this video. I think everyone can learn to knit and yes it's hard and yes it can be really confusing but I think a lot of knitters and crocheters don't take time to stop and slow down and show exactly what they're doing to people who are new. When I first started I kind of had to figure it out on my own and it was pretty tough. Alright, so we did two rows of knitting and now we're going to do one last row of purl for the cuff portion before we move on to the wrist. So we're going to purl all the stitches. So when I was creating this glove, I wanted to create a glove that didn't look like a regular glove, you know. Most of them have ribbing on it, knit two, purl two, or knit one, purl one. But I wanted to create something that was still simple, that didn't have any lace work or yarn overs or cables, but wasn't exactly like the regular version of a glove with the ribbing on it. So that's why I came up with this. Alright, so that's going to be all for part one. So we made it to 20 minutes, and it took me 20 minutes to make the cuff. And we're going to go on to the wrist portion in part two, and you can find that here. And I hope you have enjoyed this step-by-step -step knitting tutorial so far, and let me know what you want me to make next. Bye!